How you guys doing? It is Mike from Baltimore Rides, and it is Tuesday evening. Well, it's actually technically Wednesday morning. It's about 2.40 in the morning. I am wrapping up for the night. Uh, a little bit of a quiet evening tonight. I did about 1.30, 1.40. I haven't looked at the final numbers since the last couple rides, but it's probably in the 140 range. Excuse me, a little bit of a quiet night tonight. It was uh, kind of my own fault. I took a detour going into the city. Instead of taking 83 right into downtown, I detoured because of some traffic. Went down 129. Then I got caught up running an errand and I stopped and got something to eat because my stomach was growling. So I got off to a late start, I'm not going to lie. I probably didn't get my first ride until about 6.15. Lost an hour of surge rush hour pricing. Um, and, you know, my fault, shame on me. So that's probably the, about the $10, $15 difference that I normally would have gotten on a weeknight. You know, 150 is kind of the magic number on a weeknight. If I can do better, that's great, and it happens more often than you think. If I can't, then that's okay too. Um, but, you know, 150 gets me where I need to be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and sometimes Thursday. And then Friday, Saturday, Sunday is really where you got to just rock and roll and grind. So it was all in all a good night tonight. I did not take any airport trips. A couple trips up to Dundalk and, uh, you know, that kind of neighborhood. But really nothing too far out of the city that, uh, that displaced me for very long periods of time. And that was probably the reason why the numbers were as consistent as they were. Because if you get a ride that takes you 45 minutes out of the city with no hope of bouncing back into the city from another ride, um, you know, that can be almost a death sentence. You can lose, you know, an hour of, of money-making time. So, you know, I lucked out there tonight. I had some good rides. Uh, the new updates to the Uber system have rolled out, and uh, I was interested in talking about that. So what we know right now is that there's a two minute warning when you're waiting. Once you've arrived at your destination, your pickup location, I should say, um, two minute countdown starts on the app for drivers. When you reach two minutes without that customer getting in the vehicle so you can start the trip, um, they get charged a late fee. If they, then it still counts from that point. Three more minutes getting you to the total of five um, and then you can do a cancellation no-show. You will get the late fee and the waiting fee is by what I, the way I'm, I'm thinking this thing shakes down. I have not ended up with one of those yet to see for myself. Although I came real close tonight. Somebody made it with like seconds to spare. And, um, you know, the good part about that waiting fee is that, you know, you get to that site, you text them, Hi, this is Mike from Uber. I'm in the black van. I'm right outside with my hazard lights blinking. That's what you do. You don't call. You don't send them four, five, six texts. You send them a text. They're going to get the notification through the Uber Rider app that you've arrived. But then they're also going to get a text message to their phone from the concealed number you've introduced yourself so it's not like it's just hey where are you and they think it's one of their friends hi it's Mike from uber blah 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 if they aren't reading their texts and looking at their notifications saying oh I better hustle and get to where I'm supposed to be then shame on them they deserve that late fee that you know that's a fair thing because how many times do we sit outside locations tapping our toes wondering where the hell somebody is so I was pretty I was pretty excited about that some other stuff is supposedly coming down the pipe. They're talking about tipping, um, kind of like what Lyft does. It is not in Baltimore yet, uh, as far as I can tell. So we will see. Um, sorry, my allergies are driving me bonkers right now. That's why I'm sniffling and touching my nose so much. Uh, it's gross, I know, I apologize. But we will see where that goes. I don't know if tipping is going to happen right away. They said every city should have tipping by July 30th. So it's coming soon to a theater near you. Um, and then there were some other minor tweaks. Honestly, it's two, two in the morning. I cannot remember what they were. Um, they all sounded like they were just kind of small 
um, concessionary type things that probably riders and drivers both have been asking for for a while. And honestly, you know, anything to make us a little bit more competitive, clean up the system, uh, is a great thing. I did notice some other things tonight in Baltimore. I noticed that the boost zones on the map were different. They were a little bit more sectional and smaller. It used to be that there was one giant boost zone that pretty much covered Fells, Canton, Financial, Inner Harbor, Fed Hill, and Locust Point. And the new one that was situated tonight was really just over the Inner Harbor and Fells Point and Federal Hill. It left out quite a bit of Canton, quite a bit of North Baltimore. Um, so a much more kind of localized boost zone. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I think boost is a big joke. 1.1, 1.2, that's not enough to really get me hot and heavy. You know, you start throwing up a 1.4, 1.5 boost zone, and, and I'll take that seriously. That's something that'll make me get out of bed and come to work at a different time than I normally do. But 1.1, I mean, come on. My pricing adjustment is, you know, 0.86 for a mile, you know, and then 0.086 for a minute. So you're talking less than a dollar a mile. You're adding on 10 cents. I'm not, I'm not too thrilled about that. So, you know, I'd much rather hit surge and I feel like I have a good time frame for when the surges hit the city. Rush hour, 7 p.m., you get another one around 9, 10 o'clock, and then you obviously get your end of the night rush at like, uh, you know, let's call it midnight to 2 a.m., where it surges in and out in like sporadic little pops based on whatever's going on in the city. Um, other exciting news, some steam pipe blew up on Utah Street tonight in Baltimore right when the game was getting out. Kind of big, uh, a big old hot mess down there. So you might hear about some hubbub around that. Uh, and that's really about it, guys. It's seven minutes now. I'm going to try and keep these things under 10 minutes. Um, I have been a little bit remiss about my videos lately, and I apologize for that just a lot of stuff going on. I had some family drama with my mom. Um, she's 72 and uh, I'm trying to help her as, as much as I can. And so that took some time out of my hands. Father's Day took some time away from Uber. Um, the kids wanted me to go to the carnival. It was a hot mess. I'm not going to go into that side story. Um, and of course, I still don't have my cameras. Uh, eBay and this particular seller is just a disaster. It is uh, not getting close to resolution, so I'm bidding on another camera right now, uh, which really, really frustrates me because the set that I initially bid on pretty much had everything I wanted, and it was maybe a too good to be true. Maybe that's the case. I don't know. But, you know, I was talking to a cabbie tonight. He was driving an actual yellow cab. We were stopped at a red light together. It was kind of like I don't know, 11.30, and um, I told him, I said, you need to switch, dude, you need to start driving Uber. Oh, no, you guys don't make enough money. I said, but I make $1,000 a week. No, you can't, it's not possible. I said, I make $1,000 a week. Do you wanna see, I'm gonna prove it? Oh, really? I gave him my phone number, I said, text me, and uh, I will send you screenshots and prove it to you, and I'll be happy to teach you how. Um, I also, you know, talk to some people tonight. My business cards are not in, they're on order. They should be here any day now. But, um, you know, referrals is the way of the future. So I'm gonna set it up where I can be a personal driver to people. I want them to know that there is a way for people to request me and that if I'm the closest by proximity, so if I'm sitting in your driveway when you put the Uber request in, I'm gonna get the Uber. And uh, if you coordinate with your rider and your driver, you know, be here at this time because I have a flight I got to get to at the airport. You know, and I pull up at three in the morning, you click the button, I'm going to get your ride, I'm going to drive you to the airport. Bing, bang, boom. And I'm going to get some repeat business from that. I know I am. There's, uh, there's definitely some city customers that um, I bump into time and time again. I'm going to, you know, make them a little bit more aware. There's a couple girls downtown that, uh, that work at some... Um, 
interesting places where clothes are optional and uh, we'll just leave that at that and I've told them as well you know if you need a personal driver to get you home from work at night you know those are kind of sketchy neighborhoods at night you know here's my number I will have a card soon and uh, text me you know in advance kind of let me know what time you're gonna be leaving what time your shift is over I will be out front and uh, and I can give you a ride home through the uber system so you know that's that's the way you do this sustainability is the key to any business venture you know and that's really the goal here is scalability and sustainability so I'm gonna talk a little bit more that about that on my next video it is almost 3 a.m. and I'm getting close to my exit so I'm gonna let you guys go again Mike from Baltimore rides talking about uber in Baltimore and Maryland and uh, love you guys. Peace out.